Hi, everybody. I wish you guys could see the scene backstage. There are five creative introverts pacing nervously, looking down, <laughs> and I'm one of those people. I am one of those people. All right, I want to start off today kind of by setting the tone about what it is I'm going to do. I'm thinking about this last night. The talk is called The Art of Communication. I thought, that's such a grand title to live up to. I'm setting myself up for failure. I think I should have called it How to Say What You Think. The other thing I wanted to say is that this is kind of a hybrid talk slash workshop, so I request your participation. And I know that's kind of ironic, right? I thought I'm gonna ask you to talk at a talk about communication. And if you're throwing up in your mouth right now, <laughs> it's okay, all right? Don't look for the exit sign or conveniently go to the bathroom all of a sudden. I just embrace it and just be part of this. And, and lastly, what I wanna do is encourage you to have a dialogue with me as much as possible. I do have a talk, I have 30 minutes. How we use it is entirely up to you, okay? Um, how many of you guys struggle with saying what you think, right? Talking about budgets, you know, asking for the overage, uh, giving art direction to a teammate, saying no, and if you're in that position, letting somebody go. Those are really difficult things to talk about. And it's especially compounded because our tribe, our community of creatives, we're introverted in, by nature. We don't like conflict, so we're very conflict averse, and we'll do anything we can to avoid it. So what I'm gonna try to do today is to help you overcome some of that by providing you some tools, some stories. And I wanted to share some, some thoughts on the slipperiness of the English language. There's um, this book called Words Fail Me, written by Teresa Monacino. She's a British designer, and so I wanna share some of her thoughts on how evasive the English language is, which makes communication even more difficult. Um, she wonders why monosyllabic has five syllables, why abbreviation, the word abbreviation is so long, why we tell people when you get a cold, you actually run a fever, and if somebody tells you if it's good for you, then most certainly you will not like it. And I'm accused of this quite often. Why being blunt can result in a remark that's cutting. And hair Im implies a lot, as in you all have nice hair, but I have few hairs. <laughs> and lastly, when somebody says you believe me, the word lies in believe. Okay, so here's how it's gonna be structured today. Um, I'm gonna tell you a few stories and tell you how I overcame my inability to say what I think. I take you along that journey and share with you a framework, a formula, if you will, to help make that process a little easier. And then we're gonna practice together, time permitting, okay? So first I'm gonna start off with a story. Um, there's a gentleman, his name is Ben Burns. He reached out to me through the internet, through Facebook. And while driving home one night, from Santa Monica, I decided to give him a call. And after talking to him for a little bit, I realized something with Ben, that he was working 60 hours a week, he was married, and he had a baby on the way. But what was startling to me was how little money he actually had for all the effort he put into it. So it turns out Ben was making less than minimum wage. And we reached that conclusion pretty quickly, and he sighed in desperation. What made it worse was I told him, Ben, I can't help you. You're working too many hours. You won't have any time for me to help you. And in fact, you're actually better off working at Starbucks because at least you're not stressed out and you make better money. And then he did something that I didn't think he would do because I give advice to people all the time. He actually agreed and said, okay, I need to fire my clients. And people don't say that, so that caught me off guard. I said, look, before you fire your clients, me suddenly realizing the tremendous responsibility I was gonna have in this man's future, his wife and his future kid. He says, okay, wait, wait. Before you fire your client, let me tell you how to fire them because there's the right way to fire them, okay? So if you guys are feeling this right now, you might wanna lean into this conversation. So I said to him, Ben, what you wanna do is call up your clients. Call them up and tell them this very thing. Tell them that you've been growing your practice that you appreciate their lo loyalty and their patronage over the years. However, you can no longer 
continue to do the work at the current rate. However, because you appreciate their loyalty, that you're going to offer them a discount on your current rates. And if they can't afford that, you'd be happy to recommend somebody else to work with them. So he said, Ben, let's do this. So he did it a couple times. It was a little bumpy, but he got it. And that was the end of that. And I totally forget about this conversation. So a week later, I'm driving home again, and my phone is buzzing. I'm like, oh, I wonder who it is. I look at it and call her ID. It's Mr. Ben Burns. And I had a little panic. I was like, oh, my God, I forgot about this guy. And I was, like, debating. I could send him to voicemail. I don't want to do this conversation right now. But I found the courage. I picked up the phone. I talked to him. I said, hey, Chris, I did what you told me to do. I fired all my clients, and they're all gone. But three of them decided to stay at the new rate. <laughs> so in that one piece of communication, he got rid of all his clients that he didn't need, and those three clients, he was going to bill more than he did previously with all of them combined. And now we can begin the good work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Woo, right? <laughs> ben Burns. I have another story about Ben later, and you can clap for that one too if you want. We'll see what happens. Uh, his story is complicated. Okay. Uh, here's the problem with the communication, all right? So we wrestle with this all the time. On the one hand, if you're very clear, no, I'm not going to do that. Go to hell. The problem is you're really clear, but it leaves the other person feeling like, oh, that's a little aggressive, and there's no context, right? That's one side of it. And the other side of it is that instead of saying what it is that we want to happen, we kind of beat around the bush. We tell this complicated story, and in that story, the other person and we are lost in the conversation. We have no idea what it is that we want anymore. So the trick is to try to find the balance between these two things. And how do we do that? So what you want to do is to be able to have a clear outcome with a little bit of context. So now we have an explanation. My business coach used to tell me this all the time. Absent an explanation, people create their own narrative. So when you say no, they think, oh, you don't like me. You don't want to work with me. But if you say no, it's because I'm committed to another project. No, this budget doesn't fit within the parameters which I'm comfortable working in. Now we understand we can work through that problem. Okay? The other thing that we need to know is this, is that the idea, the goal of communication is not to be polite. It's to be clear. To be clear. People want to know where you stand. So if somebody asks you, how was that movie? or did you enjoy that restaurant, you're okay giving your opinion. This is how you stand on the subject, so be clear. And the last thing is sometimes people confuse the idea of being assertive with being aggressive. So I found this thing on the internet, the Assertive Bill of Rights, okay? So let's go through it really quickly. So I have the right to be responsible for my own actions, to make mistakes, to be myself, to be treated with respect, to express my feelings, to say no and not feel guilty, and so on and so on. That sounds okay, right? That doesn't sound aggressive. That means like I have a right to believe what I believe. I'm not going to make you feel bad, but I can believe this. So it also means that the other party has the exact same rights and we respect each other too. They also have the right to make mistakes, the right to be themselves, to be treated with respect. So it's a mirror. If we understand that, I think we're on the road to something good together. Okay? I see some puzzled looks here, so I'm like, all right, you can interrupt me soon. Okay. So part two is think, say, do. I'm managing my time here. I'm a little nervous. Got to get through this 30 minutes here. So have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to say something but couldn't or didn't? Anybody think about that? Like, yeah, like every day. <laughs> like, why didn't you say it? Why? What held you back? So I talk to people all the time, and that's the privilege that I have is I get to speak to designers, um, to business owners, and I get to understand why. So here are a couple of the main reasons why people don't say what they say and see which ones ring true to you. Maybe it's more than one. That sometimes, if you're in a group, you feel like it's not your responsibility to say it. Somebody else will say it. And so we all think that, and then nobody says anything, especially if you're in a meeting. And, and this is the one I think most people are guilty of. We don't want to step on toes. Like that's, uh, I might hurt somebody's feelings. Sarah's feelings might be hurt. Bob's feelings might be hurt. It makes us really uncomfortable to say what it is that we think. We want to be polite. We assume someone else will. Or we just postpone the conflict. We just postpone it. We send it in email because it's 
it requires less courage to say something in email. Okay. Several years ago, I was in this great position as a company. I had more work than I could do, but for some reason, I could not build a team big enough to handle the work that I was getting. And the reason why I was, I was paralyzed by fear, this is my business coach, his name is Kier McLaren. And he told me, Chris, it's not that the people are not qualified, they're not talented enough, it's because you're afraid to fire people. That's why. So he taught me how to fire people. And that sounds horrible, as you guys are looking at me like, ooh, the Grim Reaper's on the stage, <laughs> right? But here's the irony, here's the irony, is that when I learned to fire people, I hired more people. What kind of weirdness is that? That's the paradox, right? So I wanna teach you some of those things uh, and, and hopefully you can grow your company. You can speak your mind and say what you think. This is the second story about, about Ben Burns. Um, we were called by a very famous producer. I can't tell you what client it was for or who it is. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> cannot say it, okay? But I was busy doing a talk or something so I could not be part of the meeting. So Ben and two of my creative directors and my executive producer and an art director and drove out to this famous producer's office. And so later in the day, he called me to tell me what happened. He says, Chris, we were there. They talked about a logo. They're launching some toy line. Something's going to be amazing. And he said, Ben, just cut to the chase. How much? He goes, ah, Chris, I know. We, we, could, we didn't find out how much. And then I got upset. I got upset because of a lot of different reasons. One is because this is my team. These are the people I've trained on how to do this, to be business ninjas, and yet they leave a meeting not knowing what the budget is. I said, this is all kinds of wrong. And I'm, I said to him, Ben, may I have permission to just rip you a new one right now? <laughs> he goes, yes, Chris, I'm sorry. I'm ready to learn. I'm like, okay, let's do it. I said, I went in there and ripped it. Okay, uh, sorry, in case you didn't know what that looked like, it looks like that, okay? But I asked first, all right, so I respected his right to say no, okay? I said, so first of all, we never go to a meeting ever, ever without knowing what the budget is. And you're sitting there thinking Scott or, or uh, Matthew will say it because they're more senior than you. Like, who are you to say it? But right now, I'm talking to the person who should be responsible. You should have said it. You have all the tools. I've trained you well enough. You should be able to do this. And why didn't you? Were you guys fanboying over there? Is that why you went there? Because like, oh my God, I can't believe it's that producer. So you have to be able to say this. And what I realized is he was betraying himself. He knew he needed to say this. He wanted to say it. But then they all just got back in the car, drove back to the office, and decided to do it in email. Okay? So it turns out that all this anxiety that we have isn't about what it is that we want to say, it's about what we don't say. That's where the anxiety comes from, right? So if you have a friend who's overstaying their welcome at your house, couch surfing, and you're like, oh, it's time to get out, that stress is caused because you didn't tell them, I think it's time for you to get out. If you said that, everything would be fine, okay? So I'm talking to Blair Enns on a podcast, and he says, Chris, if I could make a law, an immutable law like gravity, I would say that all creatives must say what they think. You must say what you think, okay? And the root of that is, believe it or not, about happiness. It's about happiness. Because when you, what you think, say, and do are in perfect alignment, you're really happy. You need to understand it. So you have this thought. You feel like the budget is too low or somebody overstepped their boundaries and you don't say it. So what do you do instead? You go home and you become a resentful designer. That's what happens. And then eventually it culminates to a point in which you can't take it anymore, and then you just bust open. Everybody's like, whoa, what happened? I thought everything was cool. And probably the person that you open up on is not the person who's been doing this to you. Okay. So now is the participation part. I'm running behind schedule, I need to talk faster. So what's a difficult, difficult or uncomfortable thing that you want to talk about and don't know how? Um, I'm sorry I forgot all about this because I was nervously pacing backstage myself that I should have asked for a mic, which I don't have one right now, but that's okay. If you guys talk really loudly, we'll do this. And we need to move really fast because I have a lot of material to crush down in 30 minutes here. So does anybody want to volunteer to say something? Okay. Well, Michael, I know you. You can't do this. Okay. Sorry. I'll pick this person up front. I'm sorry because you're so far away. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. So you you told me the whole story. You want to talk about budget, and you're afraid to talk about budget because sometimes let's focus on the times that you are. Because if not, then I don't need to help you, right? We're good to go. All right. So the times in which you're afraid to talk about budget, what's been the problem? Fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. Okay. So you're afraid that if you say a number, that they're going to say no. And what does that mean to you if they say no? It means you're losing a client. Can you lose a client you don't have? Okay. Let's keep going. I'm not trying to make this belligerent, you guys. Like, don't attack him. Right? It's, it's fine. It was like, mm, never mind. I won't ask that question. <laughs> Right? Okay, keep going. Okay, so first of all, we need to understand we can't lose something we don't have. Like, I lost that home in Beverly Hills. I don't have that home. I never had it. Okay? Keep going. It's, it's a potential, I suppose, right? So it's the potential of work that you assume you may have. Or right. 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 So there's a lot of, like, famous people, philosophers and gurus who talk about the future and the past, right? The past is a memory. The future is your imagination. And both of them don't matter. And it's time to be here now. So we don't have that. So here's the cool thing. You need to realize this, and this is mindset work, is that before this moment in time, you didn't even know that this client existed. They called you out of the blue. They reached out. So, you know, it's like the wind. It blows through your house. It comes and it goes. It doesn't really matter. Once you let go of that, that fear and that power that the client has over you that you readily gave up to them, you reclaim. Okay? Now, here's the other thing. I want you to think about the opposite side of that coin. Okay? When, when somebody's like, what's your name? Ben. ben. Oh, pff, how convenient was that? <laughs> Plant. Right? Okay. <laughs> Right? So Ben, Ben is like, hey, Ben, how much do you charge for, what do you do? I'm a designer, graphic designer. Like, you build products, uh, like web, web design, uh, apps? Uh, physical. That, oh, physical, like real products. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it. In Silicon Valley, product designer means a screen designer. Sure. Yeah. I'm still confused by that. Okay. So he's a product designer, so I'm like, oh, how much would it cost for you to design that product? You hem and you haul and you beat around the bush. What's happening there? What's happening in my mind? Is he professional? He's not confident. Does he know what he's doing? What, what, why can't you just tell me? If I ask you, uh, do you live in town? Um, I used to. I live in oh, okay. Like, well, okay, I want to ask you a different question. Sorry, you messed that part up for my script. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, is, is it cold here? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. See, so like, if you're like, well, I don't know. It depends on the coldness. What are we talking about? Uh, I'm going to move on, Ben. You see? So we got to learn that in the business world, people talk about money project scope, deadline, all that kind of stuff, and it's just part of doing business. How much it costs, you should be able to say, okay? Oh my gosh, my time. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna skip over this. Ah, there's an example, example, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys the formula, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh, that's what I get for trying to do this so fast. Okay, formula. Okay, so three, two, one formula. Here we go. Three. Three. What is the preferred outcome, goal that you want to have? What do you want to have happen? What do you need? What action do you want the other person to take? Like get out of my house, uh, pay me this amount of money, whatever it is. Think about that, okay? Ready? Two, what is the feeling you have around this request or decision? Okay, this is a little tough. So what is your feeling? And then, one, why do you feel this way? I feel X because of Y. I feel upset. Because you keep changing the scope. And then I would like this to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up the formula. We start with a feeling. And the reason why I started with the outcome is most people don't start with the outcome. So they start rambling on about stuff. And it's like, what do you want from me, man? Okay? So start with the outcome. Tell me how you feel. Tell me why you feel that way. And then mix the order so that you always end up with the outcome that you want. So it works pretty smoothly. I'll give you a few of them, okay? So if you say this, this is considered blaming because there's you statements. You never call me. I guess we just won't talk anymore. Well, geez, be that way. So instead, use an I statement. I feel hurt. This is the formula. And here's the reason why when you go so long without calling. Now, here's the outcome I want, right? So I'm afraid you, you don't care. How can we stay in touch where you don't feel suffocated by me? That's beautifully written, right? I stole that off the internet. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> it's, I'm like, God, I wish I could talk like this all the time. I can't. Okay, here's another one. Blaming. You can't keep coming home so late. It's so inconsiderate. So I feel worried when you come home late. I can't even sleep. What would like to happen is for you to text me if you're going to be late. You see the formula? 
it be, see, I'm a formula kind of guy. It makes life much easier. This is your recipe, okay? I'm going to skip the next one. We're going to do some practice because we got to get into it. So here's the scenario. Here's what I want to do. And I think we only have time for maybe one opportunity to talk to each other here. Sorry. So a friend always cancels plans at the last minute. Recently, you were waiting for them at a restaurant when they called to say they couldn't make it. <laughs> no friend of mine. Okay. So what I want you to do is practice using this in the I statement. I'm going to give you guys two minutes, okay? Two minutes. I want to be respectful that I keep this at 30 minutes. So why don't we just turn to one another, find somebody. Except for Matthias, don't talk to anybody. My son is over there, so don't worry about you, okay? <laughs> so how can you say this, all right? Say, I feel, the reason why I feel this way, and the outcome, okay? Why don't you guys turn and go? Two minutes is all we got. And then... No? You want to take off my hat? <laughs> yes. Can we get your son up here at some point? Yeah. Oh. Right now? You mean? Yeah. Matthias. Oh, yes. Come on, come up here. Move your butt. Come on. Hurry up. She wants to take a picture with us. Okay, like, Matthias, I, I feel hurt because I'm sitting around waiting for you. What I like for you, I know what it is. I feel upset when you're not ready to go because you make me wait and you don't respect my time. Okay? All right. Okay, okay. All right, let's come back, guys. Come back. All right, so that was more or less two minutes, right? More or less? How, how do we do? How do we do? Ben? He said, I'm great, dude. Yeah? Not too hard, right? Okay. Now, believe it or not, I've coached people on how to do really difficult things to talk about money and actually to fire people. Really. And, like, that's so cold. But what happens is when they do it the way I teach them how to do it, their life changes. They get rid of somebody. They move on. They're happier. They can now focus on the employees that are actually productive in their team. Is there any, does anybody have any questions or thoughts on, on that to see if I can make it clearer or anything, if I can clarify anything? No? Anybody? Okay, well, way up there in the balcony. Okay. I actually have this conversation more than I'd like to admit, okay? Why don't we work on it together, okay? You need to let somebody go? Uh, no. They're not in this room. <laughs> it's like, right next to you? Oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. This is always tricky when we do this live, right? Okay, okay. So you want to let somebody go, right? Okay. <laughs> no, he's just, we're just kidding around. Okay, let's start with the outcome. What would you like? Would you just like to get rid of them or you want them to pay more money, make it less revisions? What do you want? What's the outcome you want? Okay. Perfect. So you don't want to work with them anymore. Okay, so when they're making all these changes for paying you for too little, how do you feel? Wow. Ooh. Okay, so here's what I like to do. Uh, underappreciate is a better word than worthless because it's so emotionally charged, right? I'm just saying in, in terms of like words we choose, okay? Um, uh, are there other words? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel like you're, you're not being valued? Okay, so there's lots of words we can choose here. So we're going to just choose one of them. I'm going to say, I feel this way because this. And then tell them the outcome. So let's try it. So let's pick a word that's less emotionally charged. And then let's, let's say why without blaming people if we can. Again, 
No, keep, keep going. We can work through this. I can burn down the rest of the clock on this. Let's go. Really? Okay. Okay. So what's the outcome you want? You didn't include the outcome in there. Let's give this person a name. Don't use their real name, please. <laughs> ben. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, okay, let's move it along. Okay, who, who is this person? Ben? Okay. So here's how I'd probably approach this, because I know I gotta break up. I know I gotta break up, so it's really not even a point even to communicate to them anymore, like how I truly feel. I just wanna get out of this relationship. That's one where you start to say things like when you break up with a, another person, like it's not you, it's me. <laughs> and by the way, I packed all your stuff and it's outside. <laughs> you're just, you're ready to move on, right? You can say like, I feel despite my best efforts, I can't seem to solve the problem the way that you want. So I, I think it's best we both find somebody that's more compatible with each other. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Thanks guys, you guys are too kind. You're very generous. I'm going to not get off the stage now. Okay. So scenario two, three, four, whatever. We're going to do all that because, you know, sorry. I, I timed this in bed uh, last night that it was only 10 minutes long and somehow I got to this part. Okay. So here's some pointers for you, okay? Tone. Tone. Uh, this is Maya Angelou. She's like, people forget what you said, but people will never forget what you did. Sorry. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I totally butchered that and it's sitting right here in front of me. That's why she's got this sad face. I'm mean, like, I messed up. Okay, so feel, feel. So believe it or not, and this is going to sound like sacrilegious to a bunch of content creators, style matters more than substance. Style matters more than substance. So check this out. This is Tony Robbins. So how you say something is more important than what you say, okay? Because if the tone in which you say something, the speed and the, the pacing, the impact, it all impacts meaning. So depending on how you say something, it could evoke a feeling of curiosity, that you're unsure, that you're inflexible, that you're nervous and anxious, embarrassed and excited. And none of these are good or bad. You just need to use the right emotion for the desired outcome that you want. Sometimes you actually want to sound unsure because you're inviting dialogue in. And sometimes, like when you're trying to get rid of Ben, you're inflexible. Like there is no negotiation here. We're done. There is no room for him to argue or weasel his way back in because he's a weasel. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this. I'm not an actor, so let's see how this works, right? So one line can have many meanings. So one of the things I try and tell people when they talk about budget or uncomfortable things is try to smile when you're saying, John, what are you doing? And you can say the silent, like, wow, in your mind, and then read the, the statement or again, like, John, what are you doing? Okay, now it turns out to you if you very the speed in which you say, it can drastically change the meaning. Now, I'm going to try to do this without changing the volume just yet. Oh, my God, 1 minute 28. Okay. John, what are you doing? You see how that impacts it? Now, let me try it another way. John, what are you doing? <laughs> you see that right there? So this is not like verbal ninja work here. Think about the tone in which you use, and you can just vary the pacing, and it can totally impact how the other person receives it, okay? So here's the, the hot tips in the last minute that I have here. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. It's more important to be clear than to be polite. We understand that now, right? You need to say what you think. Use I statements versus you. I feel this. That way the other person doesn't feel attacked. That opens you up for argument. Avoid language and tone that attacks, blames, and judges the other person. Smile when you talk. It works all the time. I try to advise people when they're talking to clients over a conference line and they can't even see them, whether you're gay, straight, or other, try and flirt with the person a little bit. It makes everything more possible. It really does. <laughs> like, check this out. Check this out. How does 200,000 sound? <laughs> right? It works. I promise you it works. One time I had to break up with a client. I said, yeah, like, um, you know, I don't know if we can continue to work together anymore. And she turned to me. This is a big client. Chris, we're not getting divorced, are we? I'm like, no, unless you say we are. Fantastic. We're both happily married, right? 
The other thing is what you want to do is you want to provide options so that the other person feels that they have input on the outcome. This is the art of not of saying no. It's like you give them two options. You either pay me more or you're basically saying, I'm not going to work for you anymore. Either you show up on time or you can't be here. It's almost like I have no decision to make. All the power is on you. My screen went blank. Okay, so I, I got to go. Okay, guys, so thank you very much. I, I will see you, some of you guys at the workshop, okay? Thank you. Thank you.